um, really um, probably about 94, 95, I took a job at um, Nat City Bank in um, collections, um, was going to work. I needed to take care of my family. I needed to help take care of my family and um, just was driving to Cleveland every single day and um, just the, the grind of it all. And I didn't like what I saw, mm. um, 30, 60, 90, 120, and that was it. Went to recovery, went to charge off, went to foreclosure. And, and after that, I had no control. I, I always used to think, um, if I could just get a payment, I can save them. But you couldn't save everybody. And, and it just felt like you were always drowning. Mm. And, and one day I took the time to read and understand the documents that I was processing. <laughs> um, and in the documents, the note said that I had, I, we had the right to sell the document, the, the note mm. um, at any given time. And I was like, oh, well, if I can, if I could sell it, if I could sell this to somebody, that would be golden. So some of us um, got creative. This was before all this compliance stuff. Mm -hmm. And we actually sold a lot of loans on eBay. We were selling wow. cards on eBay. On eBay. We um, did this huge, um, we sold all this stuff. We bundled it up and we sold it on eBay. Um, we were doing a lot of leases. We sold them on eBay. Um, and that was kind of like where we started because I was always thinking outside the box. But then there was somebody on Wall Street who um, we all know, but I won't name his name, um, who actually had reached out and wanted to buy a note from me. And, um, and I sold that note to him for $1,000, hmm. which really created our space because after I sold him that note for $1,000, um, he made it so easy. He was like, well, do you have any more of those? Um, I started typing up, not on a spreadsheet, you guys, <laughs> not on a spreadsheet, on a Word document. I started <laughs> typing up um, loans that were charged off and sending them to him. And he was selling them to guys like Dave Van Horn, Mike yep. Rasika, mm -hmm. um, some of the guys that have been around for a long time, um, Kevin mm -hmm. Cordell, yep. um, and the secondary and the secondary market. But I didn't know what I was doing. I was just making my bonus. <laughs> um, I'm just keeping it 100 with you guys. I yeah. had no idea what I was doing other yeah. than making my bonus and making my life easier as a banker hmm. and making him promise that he wouldn't pursue a deficiency balance if he settled with these people. Hmm. I, that, was, that was the language that we came up with. He promised me that he would never pursue a deficiency balance against anyone. So that's where it kind of like, there's a language out there in our space that, oh, well, we won't pursue a deficiency balance. Well, that was a conversation that we had <laughs> early on in the late 90s that there would be no deficiency balance pursued if they bought the loan wow. all the way back from that city. That's amazing. So that's kind of like how I stumbled into this, yeah. um, this space. And, um, and in 2004, um, we did this over and over and over again. We started like doing $10,000 trades and went to $100,000 trades and I was getting excited. Then we went to $250,000 trades. And I think by the time I left, we were probably doing about 850 to a million dollars a month. And that was in 2000, 2004, late 2005 is when I actually left the bank and I went to the origination side. And then I went to go work for him also. Okay. Um, but that's kind of how I got started. It was kind of by accident. So selling non-performing loans in 2004, like right in the heyday of crazy lending and everything else. Mm -hmm. And there, yeah. were the, there were that many non-performers you were able to sell a million dollars a month. Listen, it was so crazy. Even then, yeah. Um, yeah. I was in a cubicle and literally I had files, like I was drowning in a cubicle, like they were stacked up. Wow. You want to know like my process on how I picked the file to send a foreclosure? I just picked one. <laughs> literally wow. winner um i would just pick a file there was no rhyme or reason we were working in lotus and dos there was no i mean like as long as you met your goal there was no yeah. pressure wow but back then things weren't in default like they were today like they were in 08 09 2010 but you still have that many loans that are defaulting in 04 
with the way the market was, it's is pretty astounding. And interest rates were super, super high. Yeah. You know, they were inter- we're complaining about interest <laughs> rates today, you guys. I mean, like I was charging off stuff at 11, 12%. Yeah. 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 So wow. Uh, hmm. So, you know, people are like, well, you know, the, the feds is doing this on purpose. This is intentional. Well, okay, well, 2004, we were charging off loans at 11%. Mm-hmm. So real quick, so those who are not with the word can you define what charge off means for those people who may not know a charge off is a loan that has not performed and it has gone delinquent 120 days and according to banking standards if a loan has gone delinquent for 120 days the bank has to write it off as a loss and legal action has to be called or the bank will accelerate the balance and it is due in full um And sometimes they will do a modification or allow them to start making payments again, but Mm -hmm. it no longer sits in the normal realm of banking. They have to go to the special department, um, (laughs) to the land of the misfits, uh, recovery department. Yeah. So most of the loans that were bought over the years have been charged off loans, just so everyone knows. So yeah. Yes. Yes. So then you got into originations and then how did that transfer into you started buying your own? Well, um, I... Well, I felt like I needed to learn origination because I really didn't know origination. So I mm-hmm. went to work for, um, I went to work for some of the CD lenders. Um, okay. I worked for Option One, worked for Novastar Mortgage, okay. and um, yeah, the great ones. <laughs> and um, and then um, went and worked for a hedge fund um, that was in this space that was mm-hmm. buying a lot of um, stuff that was from um, Neighbor Works of America, neighborhood housing. And when I learned the process of underwriting, um, it made me very, very well-rounded um, where people mm-hmm. say it made me dangerous mm-hmm. because I knew the back end of mm-hmm. understanding about people and life happened. But then I also learned the process of the upfront process of all the things mm-hmm. that you needed in order to be able to get a loan and understanding credit, um, which, made, which made me a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And um, I'm just not tech savvy. I, I'm not. I'm not a technology guru. I'm just know how to. You have it up process. here, though. I know how to process the information, but I don't know how to use technology. So I'm. That's my weakness is technology. We all yeah. have weaknesses and strengths. Okay. <laughs> and um, so it was. It was really. It was amazing that once I learned how to underwrite, it actually made me a better negotiator about recovering dollars. I was always really a top negotiator with recovering money for the bank. Even mm-hmm. before I learned how to sell loans, I was always a top negotiator in reference to recovering dollars. And so that's also something that I've been known for in our space in mm-hmm. negotiating workouts um, with people um, because that's a strength that you have to have in our space yeah. um, when you work loans that are in default, yeah. being able yeah. to negotiate with the borrower, fact finding information, to get that information to be able to use to your benefit, to get the dollars to actually make your loan re-performing that. Some people may not know what underwriting is, right? Can you, I know it's long-winded, you know, origination is a big deal and underwriting is a different thing. Can you quickly explain the difference what they are and what they mean? So um, origination is, is basically when you take an application, you take an application, what consists of that? You basically, you provide income documents, um, assets, you tell the truth. Um, you have to have either income, meaning income doesn't mean employment. So some form of income and um, you have to be employed for at least two years. That's part of your application process. And then the underwriting process means that we look at and we evaluate everything. Um, the manual part of that has been removed. Um, we have an automated underwriting system now. Um, there are still some people who manually underwrite, but a lot of it is just basically we put it into a system and it basically gives us what, what our conditions are to get right. your loan approved. Right. Um, but we still will verify the information. Um, so there is still a human approach, a human touch to that. But the math equation pretty much. Yes. And, um, and, and in the underwriting process, what it does is 
um, it also allows you to verify the income, um, verify your tax returns. Um, it just wants to verify that you're being truthful and you're credit worthy. Um, so um, most of us right now are doing underwriting at 580 to 620 credit scores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, even with the, um, I heard you guys talk about uh, seller financing, which I do a lot of. Mm -hmm. um, 